Well, uh, I'm new here, but one thing that I have learned is people here love beating Carson Newman. So Saturday, yeah, I, w I would imagine that's a lot that comes from years of having not beat Carson Newman. So, so it, uh, I'd read on the way back that that was five straight years that Lenore Ryan had beat Carson Newman. So. Uh, I think everyone's in a good mood because of that. It was a good Saturday. I mean, it's beautiful weather. Carson Newman's got a, they got a very, they got a very good facility. You know, we, we got there the night before and, and had a, you know, good night before sleep, pregame meal, got up and Pastor Watts normally, you know, he's our team chaplain, normally does our, our chapels the morning of the game. But Lance Sheely, who's, who runs the FCA around here, did our, our chapel. And, you know, the, the kids, you can almost see their, he talked about, he talked about perspective of getting the chance to play college football and where that fits into your life, and you can almost see an ease come over us in the middle, in the middle of chapel. I know for myself it did because I thought back to, you know, you get caught up into all this wins and losses and where you're at, and you know, just the other day I was a kid laying in the bedroom throwing the ball in the air, catching it, hoping I could play college football. And now you're in a situation where you coach and you get to do this for a living, and it it really put the whole day in perspective. And then during warm-ups, I talked to the team after warm-ups about that of. Listen, we know what we're doing. You know how to do it. Now just go enjoy doing it. And for the, one of the first times this year, we played with that ease. And, um, you know, like I said, it was a good day. We were able to, to come out and establish some things offensively, get the run game going a little bit. Nelson Brown got, you know, had, had a good game, over 200 yards rushing. He was the conference player of the week um, Sherrod, on offense. Sherrod Williams was the conference player of the week on defense. Both redshirt freshmen who, you know, hopefully have a lot more good Saturdays ahead of them. Uh, we go right down the field. We got a trick play that we just, we said all week long. When we get inside the 25, they're going to be in this coverage, and we're going to run it. And we did, and they were in the coverage, but their D tackle tipped it, and and our slot receiver, who's a former quarterback, threw it, and we had a bad break. It went right to the other D tackle. We turned it over, and as soon as we got there, as an offense to set down, Sherrod was going down the sideline. They fumbled it right back to us. C.J. Cody threw a hitch out there, and C.J. Cody came up the corner, made a nice tackle, put his hand right on the ball, popped it out. Sherrod was was uh, pursuing the football, popped it out, and he runs down to about the four-yard line, and we go in and score, make it 7 nothing us. Kick the ball off, you know, they had a pretty good return, hold them, same thing, go back down, score, we're up 14 nothing. And then, and then a lot of the day was just playing, you know, keep away the rest of the day, trying to let the clock, you know, run as much as you could. And we know they're a dynamic offense, so we figured the more we had the ball, the less they had the ball. That's how smart coaches we are. We figured that out. And, and, uh, and we, we possessed the ball for a lot of the day. And we were able to play that style of game because, one, we ran the ball well. And that starts with Nelson on the line and the tight ends blocking and getting the checks going the right way and doing all that. But, two, we played very good defense. You know, we were able to stay in a low-scoring game and win a 20-17 to 17 game, which were I'm, the way I've grown up playing, we didn't win a lot of 2017 games. You know, we wanted a lot of possessions. You know, now we're playing where we have less possessions <laughs> because we need it to be a low scoring game because we're not dynamic yet offensively. Eventually here, you're going to see the ball going up and down the field because we want a lot of possessions. The way I, I teased the team and joked about it, I said, if me and Steph Curry shoot three shots, I may be able to shoot him for three shots. If I make two and he misses two, I went, we shoot 300, he's going to win every time. That's what the better shooter wants. You know, when you're the better you know, group, you want as many possessions as much up and down as you can. You know, what we, what we did on Saturday is we tried to flip that. We try to get it as least as we could and win it at the end, and it just worked out that we were able to win it at the end. We get we got a short field. Mike to Stevens pinned them deep all day long with our punt game. They had to drive a long way. They turned it over a couple of times. We didn't. You know they we got we got a good return with with Aaron Farmer. We were able to get a couple first downs. I think we had a third and five. We had an 18-yard run down the sideline, and we were able to run the clock down as much as we could. We put Hunter Hare in there, and he kicked the game-winning field goal, and they called timeout. And I was looking right at him. I don't know if he got it in in time or not, but he, maybe he did. So, and in, in believe it or not, we always practice two-minute drill, and I call a timeout to set up our deal. So every time right before he kicks it, I pretend I'm the other coach, and I call a timeout. So when he called that timeout, I told Hunter, I said, we practice this all the time. You're money on this second one. You know, I'm trying to make them all relax. Well, what I didn't practice all the time was the head coach coming into the middle of the field and then talking to everyone and then taking his time you know, getting back out, and I mean, that's very crafty on his part. You can tell he's a veteran, and uh, and I don't know. I mean, I guess they let him do it. So, uh, but Hunter it didn't it didn't phase him at all. If it did, he didn't show it because he he stepped right up there and put it through the pipes. And and now there's 52 seconds left in the game, and you you know you kick it and you're trying to hold on. You hope they don't return it, and and uh, you know they're not a great throwing team. They don't want to be in that game. You know, that's the thing about those option teams. You always know if you could get ahead, 
you got them. And uh, we know they don't want to be in that game, but still, they got three pretty good receivers. And, um, you know, all day long they were trying to throw a little slant pass to the slot, and our linebacker kept getting closer and closer. And finally, he got there enough that it forced the kid to throw it high, and Sherrod was in the right place at the right time and picked it off and ran it down to the four yard line. And, and uh, then we just had to regroup and make sure we were, we were good enough to kneel on the football. You always, anytime you can kneel on it to win it, you do it. So that's what we did, and it was a, it was a good day uh, for us. I, I, I watched the tape yesterday, and I mean, as a coach, we had a long way to go. You know, we're, we're still far from a finished product. Um, you know, and I told the team out yesterday, I said the same people who were telling you how bad you were last week or telling you how good you are this week, they were just as wrong then as they are now. You know, you got a lot to improve on. You know, it just, it's easy to improve on those mistakes and correct them and get better when you feel better about it. And you always feel better after, you know, after you win. So um, we had a good night practice last night, you know, just going out and throwing the ball around a little bit. We got, hopefully we got a good practice plan today. You know, we got to walk through at two o'clock and UNC Pembroke's going to be, they're not, like you said, I mean, they're, they're a four and one team and you watch the tape, you don't know how they lost the one. You know, and uh, their head coach was a graduate assistant when I went to Northern Michigan, so I know Shane a little bit. Uh, I worked with their offensive coordinator, Johnny Cox, at the North Carolina camp this summer. They're a well-coached team. They know what they're doing. When I was at Concord, we played them twice. I think both times they were in the top 10 when we played them. They beat us at our place the first year, I think 21, 10. And the next year we went down there and beat them like 35, 28 in a very good, I don't remember the exact score, but we won at their place. So I know a little bit about their program. It's been four or five years since I played them, but I do know Coach Richardson, you know, rather well. And, and he's doing it right. He's got two big running backs. He's got three tall receivers. He's very big up front. You know, he's got a quarterback that gets the ball to all those people. I mean, that's the way you want to be built. That's what you want to look like, you know, defensively. He got a couple of big D tackles, one in particular in there. Two good rush ins. The one kid's a really good over top the tight end. A really good Mike linebacker. A couple uh, safeties that they could cover, and a couple corners that fit the run really well. So there, you know, you could tell that, you know, they're a program that's had continuity in it. I mean, Coach Shinnick was the head coach there for how many years? Did a good job and went to uh, what do you go West Florida or somewhere? He really had the program going there, and Shane took over for him. He was his D coordinator, assistant head coach. So. They've had eight to ten years of continuity, doing the same thing, recruiting the same type of kids, and you can see it in their program. They got a, you know, they got a very good football team, and we'll have to play well here on Saturday to beat them. There ain't no, there's no doubt about it. And uh, good news is it's homecoming. Everyone will be all jacked up. We're coming off a good win. You know, we got a little bit something going for us right now. If we, uh, if we continue to develop, then we'll have a chance. If we don't, then I'll be in here next week with a sad face on. You know, so it's uh, it's all about us right now. Any questions? Um, like you said before, um, Sherrod had a big, big day mm -hmm. on defense. Um, your defense in general had a big game. Yeah. Um, now going up against Pembroke, a team that averages about 35 points a game, mm -hmm. um, what's going to be the scheme defensively to stop that balance attack? That well, yeah, I mean, offense? the balance attacks were the hardest ones. You know, when I was in college, we played in the run and shoot with Coach Rodriguez, and we threw it almost every play. You know, and you get some people to play two or two man, you could run some draws. But there were times when we were ahead, you had to be really creative to keep stay ahead. And there were times down on the goal line, you know, before he got into all the quarterback run stuff, that it was hard. I mean, it was all picks and fades and throw behinds. And, and you could put up a lot of numbers. There was a lot of days where we had a lot of numbers, but we didn't have a lot of points because we couldn't always play situational football. So that was an extreme offense. You know, the, the way we used to play here and the way Carson Newman plays, that's an extreme offense where you're, you're a run, 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 run heavy team. And there's times, there's situations where you're not comfortable. You know, because you're behind, or it's third and twelve, and or you need to, you know, you need a two-minute drill before the half, or, and you don't feel comfortable. You could see that Carson Newman wasn't comfortable in that situation, just like you could see Lenore Ryan you didn't used to be, or or really still isn't, but it, or or you know Northwood when I was up in the GLIAC, just like the run and shoot teams don't handle certain situations. So the best way to play is to be big and have balance. That's the way. Alabama and Florida State and all the NFL teams and all the teams that keep winning national championships, that's how they play. You know, Northwest Missouri, that's, that's the way you want to play. The problem with that play is it's hard to build. You know, you gotta, you gotta have a big line that can handle run the ball when everyone knows you can run it. You gotta have a quarterback, you gotta have good receivers. They're tough to stop because of that balance. You know, if we play cover two and say we're gonna stop the receivers, then they're gonna run the ball all day long. You know, if we try to get eight man front up in there, you know, and try to stop the run, which is generally what we try to do. Then they're going to throw those quick little passes out to the receivers, and you know, and everyone's going to be complaining that 
you know, we got to guard the receivers. Like, yeah, well, then we do that, and then they run it. <laughs> they're, they're a good offense. So the key for our defense is we got to run a little football. You know, guys got to tackle. Those aren't, those aren't secrets. You got to defeat blocks. And, you know, our defense staff has to try to stay a pitch or two ahead of them. You know, they got to be, when they're thinking run, we got to be in, you know, we got to show pass and play run defense and vice versa. So it's, it's just a chess match within the chess match. But those balanced teams are, they're really hard to stop. And that's what Pembroke is. All right. Um, offensively, um, for like the past couple of games, mm -hmm. you've been um, kind of milking the clock. This last game versus um, Carson Newman yeah. had a plus 13 time of possession on yeah. Carson Newman. Is that the plan going in on um, playing UNC Primberg when you guys get the ball to keep it on the ground instead of going in the air? Well, I mean, that's we're, we're better at running the football right now than we are at throwing it, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and that may not, you know, sometimes it's the left guard's fault, sometimes it's the quarterback's fault, sometimes it's the flanker's fault. You know, we're just we're just not totally built yet to be a pure throwing team, which I don't think that would shock anybody, you know, being what we were in the past to, to where we need to be. We played Carson Newman that way because each game's its own entity. Like, if you listen to Belichick and the Patriots and Saban and them guys talk, you, they don't really have a system. Like, they've got a system. They don't really have a style. They play each game as if it's its own entity. And the week before... You know, against against Limestone, they were a nine-man front quarters team, and we were going to throw the post, right? And that was going to be part of the plan. And and they were great at receiver and very good at running back. So you know, 14, 17 points ain't winning that game. You got to find a way to get the 35. Well, you know, we caught, we practiced the post all week. We caught it, and you know, we missed one, dropped one. There's 14 points. If we hit those in the second quarter, then the second half we could play a different style of football. We could play keep away the rest of the game. We didn't. We lose. You know, we lose 30 to 13 or whatever it was because now they get to play their style. This week's kind of similar to that week and the fact that, you know, they're a good balanced offense. They're going to be hard to hold to, you know, 20 points or 17 points the way our defense just did, you know, Carson Newman. Carson Newman, you could gang up on the run. I mean, everyone driving to the game knew they were going to run the football, right? So you could, you could kind of outnumber them. And, and we were able to make first downs last week. That's the other part of it. That, that's a great plan until you go three and out, three and out, three and out. Then people said, well, you didn't have the ball very much. Well, <laughs> yeah, because we kept, you know, we can't make first downs. So all those are good plans. It just, the, you're, it's the execution of the plans, what I want to say. Like, we'll come up with something for Pembroke. We'll have a style of play because it is its own entity. Somewhere in the middle of that game, you may change your style of play. You know, two weeks ago against Limestone, when they scored to make it 30 to seven, I said on the headsets, we got to throw it every play now and it's going in bad because we can't throw it. We can throw it, but we can't throw it when you know we're throwing it. You know, not play after play after play after play. When we have to throw six, eight, ten times in a row, we're, it's going to go the other way eventually because we're not built great yet. You know, in the same with running, I mean, you got to have some bootlegs. you got to have some, I mean, Saturday, I mean, how many different formations did we run Saturday? How many motions did we put in? How many reverses did we call? I mean, we, they knew we were going to run it, but we said we got to run it in every which way. We, we started the game out in goal line offense. You know, two tight ends and a flanker wide and a fullback and a tailback. We were in a, in, a, in a goal line short yardage offense on the first play of the game. You know, then we played two receivers and three backs in the backfield. Then we played, you know, two backs and a running quarterback. Then we played, you know, we did as much stuff as we could to try to keep them off balance, even though they knew we were running the ball. It's a lot of football talk there, but you get you get what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, you got to yeah. be better. You know, when I was at Concord, we had to get we had to get the ball to Mayo somehow, and we had to hide him everywhere. Like where's Waldo? We had to put him at receiver some. We had to hide him in the backfield, most him out. We had to put him at the Y because we were throwing it to him. All right, it wasn't it wasn't hard to figure out. Two years later, three years later at Cal, I had three guys like him. Maybe no one as good as him, but I had three guys that were all. I mean, two of the three made first team all league. Well, then I didn't have to hide anything. You know, you go play that side. And if they try to double cover you, we'll throw it over there. And if they double cover him, we'll throw it over you. If we get two of them, we're going to throw it to the all league back. But that's the best way to play. Have all the best people. You know, Sparky Anderson said that years ago. Just have the horses. Um, Pembroke's quarterback um, on the year um, has seven interceptions. From what you see on film, what, what do you see in weakness in his game so far? I, on I don't film, know. I mean, I, I think sometimes they're, they're playing from ahead. And they may get careless, you know, with it at times. I, to me, he looks like a pretty good decision maker, and he's got he's got three really good receivers to throw to. You know, maybe you know a couple of more tip balls. Sometimes you get bad breaks. I mean, I threw my senior year. I had like five interceptions on hail mary plays at the end of the half of the game. 
You know, and I still, every time I look at the interception number from my senior in college, I'm like, well, you got to take five of them out. I mean, they're Hail Mary play. You know, so I think sometimes statistics can be a little bit misleading. You're going to see him. He's going to come here. He looks exactly like the kid they had six, seven years ago when I was coaching the Concord. They look like the exact same team. It's just like the numbers have changed. So they're recruiting a certain style of player. And uh, I think he's a pretty good quarterback, good decision maker, and he's got a lot of weapons. When you got those weapons, it's easier to be a good quarterback. Trust me, I've been both. And it's a lot more fun when, when you throw the five yard out and the guy runs it for 50 yards than the other way around. Um, quarterback for us, are you looking to kind of use um, yeah. Jacob and Caleb at the same time like you did last week? Yeah, I mean, with that, where that really came about was, you know, I, I think Jared is our quarterback, and I told Caleb it, and I think he's the quarterback of the future with the way we want to play. He'll remind you a lot of Pembroke's guy. So, but I've got, so I've got to develop him. And getting where he needs to be. Same token, you're you're averaging whatever points and yards a game. You can't change the entire offense. You change the quarterback. You know, you got two guards, two tackles, two tight ends, two running backs, two receivers. You got one quarterback. So, so we had to do something. The other part of that is I can't give Caleb everything, because you know, and I can't keep keep giving Jared everything. So, you know, last Sunday I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. Do I do it every play? Do I do it every other series? Do I not do it at all? Do I do it full time? And came up with somewhere around midnight of. This is what he does well, and this is what he does well. Why not do that? You know, and the downside of it is when he comes to the game, everyone is what we're going to do. But you could still, you know, we really didn't do it by series. We did it sometimes. Second down was Jared. Third down was Caleb. You know, the next series, Caleb started the series just because what, we let the game dictate itself. You know, whatever, whatever set or formation or play that we thought was going to fit best against their defense, that's what we went with, and we didn't. We didn't worry about who was in the game. We're doing that at, really where it came from is we're doing it at receiver all the time. Like this kid's a really good blocking receiver and this kid runs this route well. Well, when he's in, let's do this. When he's in, let's do that. Kind of have the right tool for the job. The bad thing about playing that way is your intentions are, you know, they know it. You know, this kid's running the game. These are the, this is the package they're going to do. But I mean, you see it in the NFL all the time. I mean, you see the Patriots run the fullback in the game. They're going to do these two plays or the play action. You know, they bring this other kid. In the game. Everyone, if you pay attention, you can figure out people's. It's kind of an overrated part of football. That's not as important as the execution of it itself is. Anyone else? <laughs> Ask them when we win. When we lose, I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, line play. Yeah. Sounds the ball seems to be getting better. It's improving. It is. Seems like we're starting to get in some control there. We're more physical now than we were in week one. A lot of our lack of physicalness wasn't the players as much as their uncertainty, you know, within the scheme of what we're doing. Their, their knowledge of what we're trying to get done is, is growing, you know. I thought we were more physical against Carson Newman as well because there was a different focus last week in practice. And going into the game, there was a different, you could tell we were playing Carson Newman. Now, I love that, but the part that makes me mad is why? You know, why is that not all the time? Why is that not who you are? If it's frisbee golf at noon for exercise, why, why isn't that who you are? You know, it's Tuesday practice or, or algebra class. Why isn't that who you are? Why aren't you competitive all the time? You know, we come out in the opening kick, and I look down. I mean, our team's walking right behind me. I look down. We're, we're down by there. I thought we were going to have a fight or something before the game started. I'm like, when I went over, of course, I'm yelling at him. I'm like, where did this come from? You know, now half of me was thinking, well, at least we're here to, to play. <laughs> but the other half of me was like, you know, what, what is going on with this? So, you know, we are improving up front. I mean, Chris Green's been a man all year on the defensive line. You know, Johnny Nolan as a freshman, you know, I thought he had a phenomenal game a week ago as a defensive end, you know, converted linebacker. Uh, a couple of those other young kids are really stepping up. You know, Travis moved from defensive end to three technique force for the game for that game. And, and even though he's a little bit undersized in there, went in there and fought and, and did some good things. Uh, offensive line-wise, I mean, the Slagle, Slagle's had a good year as, as a guard, and, and Sutherland is one of the tackles. Cole, Cole Henderson's a redshirt, has had a really good year as a, as a right tackle. And Jaleel, you know, Jaleel's probably, well, Travis or Evans is a really good left guard, big kid, and Jaleel's probably as good a center as I've seen in this league. Their biggest thing has been, one, they're spending half the practice working on pass now when they've never did that, you know. Our stance from being a white knuckle, come out, fire low, crab team, to a more balanced stance so you could go run and pass. That's been a nightmare of a transition for those kids. And um, 
Because it wasn't like they just did it the last two years. They recruited the guys like that. Those guys did it all through high school, all through college. I mean, we, the Slago kids said, Coach, I ain't never passed blocked there. We, we passed blocked. It was we run block it, and we just happened to throw it. You know, it was a play action, and, and they threw it. So we never have done that. So that's a, I mean, the job that, that Coach McLean is doing with those guys, and they all, I mean, they're mad at him half the time because he wears them out. And, uh, but they love him on Saturdays when we run the ball and, and, and do some good things. So we're getting better up there, obviously. We need to. Anyone else? I got film waiting for me, so I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Uh, hopefully next week's is, is as good a mood as this week's been in. So, you know, let's hope. We, we, now, for my own personal whatever, beating Carson Newman counts like two or three wins is what I've, you know, it's like being a high state beating Michigan, you know. I had someone stop me yesterday and say, if you're going to win one, that was the one to win. I said, well, I wouldn't, you know, we'll take it. <laughs> Thank you so much.